It really is uh, such a pleasure to be able to sing you. <laughs> Just the real me. The real, well, that's yeah. what I'm hoping But you kind of get blown up big when you, you know, they, I had a friend, we were at the City Opera in New York, mm -hmm. he was sitting next to me, it was good, and he goes, Helen, what's it like to be portrayed on the stage in an opera? And I said, well, Robert, it's really bigger than me. I'm the one through whom the story's told, but do you think I ever thought I was going to go to death row <laughs> and be witnessing executions and all this kind of stuff? It's been a journey for me. So the aria is perfect. Oh, yeah. And when I read it, you know, because Terrence was sending the libretta and Jake was playing music for me as, as it came into being, when I saw that aria, of my journey, my journey, and it, it was just so perfect. In fact, I just finished writing a book of my memoirs called, you know, uh, uh, My Spiritual Journey, River mm -hmm. of Fire. So the journey part. But it's always great to meet people who are going to be the ones that you're going to take the audience with you yeah. into this incredible, incredible thing that's really hidden from their eyes. And, uh, and well, so you're the carrier. You're the the vessel. Well, it's a mm -hmm. pleasure to be that, to have that yeah. opportunity to do that. And yeah. Quite honestly, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm thinking back and I don't think that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting a person that I'm singing. Well, like Madame Butterfly's dead. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, really, it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, I, I, I found out I'm able to help the opera because I'll go to a city before the opera and just get on the media to tell the story, the real story that, yeah. that the opera becomes. Yeah. And uh, as Jake said, Jake Hagen, when he went to do the music, it has everything in it. You know, when he and yeah. Terrence, uh, the story of how it happened, Latvi Mansouri, who was the director of the opera in San Francisco, was yeah. going to be the millennium. And he said, I want to get a new opera. And he, his idea was something bubbly, light. Hmm. So, so he put Jake Hagee and Terrence McNally together. So Jake hears bubbly, light. And what do they end up with? <laughs> Dead man walking. Not exactly bubbly and light, but the first time they met it didn't hatch. Yeah. I mean, bubbly light didn't do it for Terrence, and really Jake wasn't excited about it either. Mm. So then they separated for six months, and in that time Terrence saw the film, read the book. So he had a list of ten things when he was going to go to meet with Jake. Mm. And, uh, and at the top of the list, he had Dead Man Walking. But in his mind, he had said, if Jake doesn't go for that, I really don't want any of the others. Hmm. And Jake Hagee said, when Terrence said Dead Man Walking, every hair hmm. on his neck stood up and he started hearing music. And he said he heard the clang of bars yeah. and the, the, the gentleness, the journey into redemption yeah. of dealing with really, really hard things. But yeah. then two human beings meeting. It's a kind of love story. Yes, absolutely. In a way. connection story. Yeah. It's 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 beautiful. I, I know in speaking with Jake about how he chooses what he composes, it always seems that he, he has to have something that hits him right here, which translates to me in the opera. Mm -hmm. This is one of those, and, and quite honestly, anything that I know of his, whether it be a song or an opera, is something that just zings straight to the heart. The audience gets it, the people on stage get mm -hmm. it. It's, it's a, a phenomenal thing. Yeah. So you actually did some of his songs. Yeah. Before you did Dead Man. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've been really lucky. I've loved his, his song rep for a long, long time. I started out with Of Gods and Cats, <laughs> which... I don't know anything about Gods and Cats. <laughs> 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 so, but yeah, yeah, I started there, Okay. and uh, I've done a couple of others, but uh, Jake wrote a piece for me called The Work at Hand mm. a couple of years ago, about three years ago, and uh, it's it's a beautiful triptych poem mm. written by a friend of his, Laura Moorfield, just before she died, wow. and she knew that she was heading towards death, and so it's kind of a how do you say goodbye, but also... The Work at Hand, I yeah, like that title a lot. It's really gorgeous. I think you'd yeah. really love love the words especially yeah well you know Jake everything I know about opera I learned from Jake because I you know he's a good person to learn from well <laughs> so he, t he one of the things I learned was that mezzos don't often get to be the star because it's usually the sopranos absolutely and he said he couldn't picture in the role 
of you know accompanying somebody on death row and yeah. dealing with all the stuff that he had done and the victim families that he couldn't picture that the sister Helen would be knocking off high seas. Yeah. <laughs> So often I feel like sopranos are, are the ethereal singers, you know, they're the, they're the heroines that come through pure as the driven snow, and mezzos are the ones that come in messing up that snow behind them. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're the human element, and I think it's, it's said very well in one of her first prayers, make me strong, make me wise, make me human. Make me human, don't you love that? I love it. When I, I, love I, when it. I read that, you know, before I, I saw it performed, I went, oh yeah, you got it. You got it, yeah. That was the first And there's a great line in there, mm. too, you know, when, when we're going at it with Mr. Hart. Because, mm. see, I made a big mistake. I didn't know what to do with the victims' families. When mm. I took the first man on death row, Patrick Sonia, yeah. I was just learning about human rights. I was just learning about the failed justice system, you know, of what Louisiana was doing to people to put them on death row. And mm. I didn't have a clue what to do with victims' families, so I stayed away from them. And Pat, Sonia, and his brother had killed these two teenage kids. Mm. So I didn't write a note. I didn't do anything to reach out to them. The prosecutors had said to them, if anybody is against the death penalty, they're your enemies. And mm. so I had stayed away. It was cowardice, basically. But boy, then when, you know, we're going up against and Mr. Hart and his anger and his trauma. Don't give me Christ, give me Helen praise yeah. You know, it was just so honest. And, uh, and then when we have that scene where the victims are singing, you don't know what it's like, and then Jake's mama, mm. you don't know what it's like to see your child slip through your fingers, you know, yeah. and I keep going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then Mr. Hart says, sister, you say that a lot. That's because you're way out of line. Mm. And there was just a lot of truth in that. I was mm. in over my head mm. uh, in, in trying to find my way. But I love that. I love that journey and showing that element of not being pristinely correct or, mm -hmm. or, or right in the steps that would be the perfect ones. Right. I love that you say, you're right, you're right. I don't know. How could I? How could anyone know? Mm. And then when he says, you know, his his bit, I love that you you say, I'm trying to get there. You're missed a heart. I'm yeah. trying to get there, Mr. Hart. Yeah. It's, it's a journey for everyone. You know, when Jake wrote that, he called me on the phone. When he got that medley of the victims singing, mm. me in the middle, the sister Helen in the middle, and then the mud he brings out the character, Terrence McNally did it in the libretto of the mother of Joseph de Roche. Mm. Most of the time, the mother of the death row inmate is, well, she's part of the problem mm. and not a victim and suffering too. But he really brings out, mm. but when he wrote that, when he composed it, he called me on the phone. So I have the phone to my ear and he's trying to plink it on the <laughs> piano and he's trying to <laughs> sing six voices. Oh my gosh. It's because he so wanted me to, you know, to get it. He yeah. said, I think we have the heart of it. They're all singing the same pain. Yeah. Everybody's singing the same pain. He said, I think we have at the heart, the heart of the opera. Yeah. And then, you know, when they were doing it in San Francisco, of course, it's the first time it was being done. Mm -hmm. So they have to sell it to the people, the bankrollers, yeah. you know, who are putting Absolutely. the money in. Absolutely. So they have these key people that were funding the opera and was going to allow them to hear some excerpts mm -hmm. of the opera. I guess to keep putting the money in. See? So, <laughs> so this is going to be a big thing. Very important. <laughs> so he said, and Helen, and when I did that scene of the victims' families, they were crying. Some of them were really crying. Yeah. I said, well, maybe they could see their money going down a hole. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're crying, that's serious, you know. And he goes, no, 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 they were so... I said, Jake, I'm teasing you. But, oh, my God. And sure enough, when you get to it, it's a crunch part of it. But it's yeah. like the heart of the struggle in so many ways. Oh, yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you, in, in the rehearsal room here, there, have, there has not been a lack of tears. Yeah. And I think it is because we're all encountering, empathizing with so many different angles yeah. of this story, because there are so many different mm -hmm. angles. Yeah. The truth is complicated. Yeah, well, and so many, in the book of Dead Man Walking, so I brought out, like, the guards that have to do the killing. So yeah. there's a character, we can't develop all of that in the opera, we couldn't develop it fully in the film mm -hmm. either, but there's a major cootie who, 
he was the supervisor of death row mm -hmm. in Louisiana, and then they moved him to the execution squad. And he called me in and he said, you know, after these executions, sister, I, I just get in my lazy boy chair, I can't sleep, I can't eat, my wife knows not to talk to me. Mm -hmm. But deep down, I know I just kill, help kill somebody who was defenseless. Yeah. So you have that all around, yeah. from the guards that, you know, the families that have suffered, every, everybody. Yeah. And for me, it was just like immersion in fire, just, I had to learn everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Baptism by fire when it comes to the, yeah. the killing machine that is. And so, and you know, system. your character, I mean, you're on the stage, all of the first act. I mean, you I carry mean, it. Literally every scene except for one. <laughs> What's the one you're not in? There's one right after the conversation with Sister Rose in the second act. Oh, yeah. Where I've got to get out of my nightgown to get oh, into yeah, the yeah, prison. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's so, it. boy, it's a lot to carry. It's it a, a really, really strong role. It's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. It's yeah. the kind of role that, well, as you were saying, mezzo-sopranos don't often get that kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, to, yeah, to be the lead character. Yeah, yeah. Because you're carrying the audience with you. You know what, in the way the it's constructed, so Terrence introduced, we're going to have the murder right off. So the audience sees the murder, so they're yeah. not using any moral, spiritual energy trying to figure out, did he do it or not? Yeah. They know he did it. Yeah. And then you meet him, and you don't like him. In fact, the opposite, because he's not remorseful. Mm -hmm. So it really allows the audience to say, well, I want him to get justice, so what will that justice be? And so for them to make the full journey. And so, and then look, the juxtaposition after that murder, where do we go? To little children clapping and singing, God will gather us around father and mother. And we've just watched yeah. the biggest separation of human life you can watch two people murdered you yeah know? yeah well it's my hope with being able to sing you in this opera to help carry the audience through your journey through mm -hmm. your learning of this uh, I loved talking with you about how you felt when you first entered the prison for the first time in your life mm -hmm. and scary yeah. very scary I was out of my element yeah mm -hmm. and it's I I come from relative privilege when it comes to that. I, I don't have the experience of that, and I think that a lot of the audience probably doesn't either. Mm -hmm. So to show that walk, mm -hmm. and to show that journey into that, and then to show that journey of providing that empathy and that connection mm -hmm. to somebody that people don't want to have anything to do with. Yeah. But to show the power and the good that comes from that is just amazing yeah. to me. And I'm hoping that's that's my goal in this, is to yeah, be able really. to help carry the audience through that experience so that they start with going, yeah, he deserves to die. Yeah, sure. And in the end, they, they are thinking. Yeah, yeah. We've had so many experiences with this, Jamie. Um, when it was shown in Austin, mm -hmm. the very first governor who signed the first warrants had the courage to come to the opera. He was there. Wow. And I wasn't sitting by him, but people <clears throat> who were said that at the end he was he was standing up and uh, crying. Yeah. And because, uh, you know, as I got to know guards, got to know all the people involved, because I've been, I've accompanied six people to execution. I'm with mm -hmm. the seventh person now, and I, please God, I think he has a chance. He's innocent. Three of the seven have been innocent. That's mm -hmm. how broken it is. And uh, he has a chance. Uh, but j you meet human beings who have done incredibly terrible things. Yeah. But then you, there's more to people than one act. Yeah. All human beings transcend one action. Yeah. We can never be embodied or contained in one action. Yeah. And we're worth more than that to encounter that. And then in my own self, I just finished writing this in the memoir, you know, that when I woke up that the gospel was more than just praying for people, or that prayer for that matter wasn't just asking God to take care of the problems of the world, but prayer was getting on fire yourself to roll up your sleeves and get in there do the and do what needed to be done, yeah. you know. And, um, and so that journey then that brought me first to the poor of New Orleans, because mm -hmm. I'd lived out in the suburbs, and what white privilege was, 
among African Americans. Yeah. My experience with the police was different. My, Absolutely. My experience with money, banks, getting money you need was different. My experience with education was different. And to realize it's not that I was so virtuous. I was just so blooming, protected, and yeah. cushioned, and resourced. Yeah. And, to, and to know that, and to realize that. The victims' families, I think, in a way, are our best teachers. Mm. Uh, Mr. Hart, because how can you have a child killed in such a brutal way? And that telling line, whereas he's getting ready to go into witness execution, you know, where he says, I know my pain is about my child's death, mm. not his death. Yeah. But what I've seen in real life was Lloyd LeBlanc, whose son David was killed. Mm. And he went through such anger, and he, he felt like he was losing himself because he was always a kind person. Mm. And when he was telling me about it, 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 the way he put it was, he said, but then he said, I figured out. I said, no. And he put his hand out like that, and he said, they kill my son but they're not going to kill me. Hmm. And I'm going to do what Jesus said. And he said, most people think forgiveness is weak, like you're condoning. Mm. But for me, it's like saving my own life. Yeah. And so that the love in me is not overcome by that hatred. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. It's incredibly powerful. Yeah. Then people have been in the fire, the ones who, who teach us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the opera because it's so honest. <laughs> You're not putting the veneer on anybody. You know, yeah. It's just a real struggle. Well, it, it, I, I love the opera because it really does just require everyone on stage in the audience to think. You know, you may walk in with this expectation of what the movie was or what the book was or maybe just an idea in your mind, but every time I've seen this, and I've seen it a couple of times, I've walked out with my head just swimming with... Mm -hmm. What, what are my convictions? What are my thoughts? Mm -hmm. Where do I sit with this? And I think that's incredible. There, yeah. I mean, I can stay from the, the point of view of somebody who sings opera just about every day of my life. There yeah. are seldom few operas that really do that. Yeah. And I'm particularly excited for what this means for Atlanta. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll love it because, you know, there's the book, there's the film, but I think opera is the fullest. Mm -hmm. art form, because you not only have live drama happening before you on the stage, which is enough, yeah. but then with the music that takes you mm -hmm. into these places in your heart, you don't even know you have. Absolutely. And it's incredibly uh, strong. So to wake people up, that's been the whole thing for me. I've been a witness to this, and it, I spent a lot of time on the road mm -hmm. taking people through the story. Yeah. And I found that people are good. They're not wedded to to the death penalty, yeah. and everybody, they may not go through a murder, but everybody knows what hurt is, yeah. or to have somebody you love who's been hurt, and to deal with, do you get even, or do you get past that, what does forgiveness really mean in redemption? Yeah. And that's what the opera really deals with. Absolutely. I'm incredibly happy that it's going to be here in Atlanta. <laughs> oh, me too, me too. <laughs> and I'm so happy you're going to be here, yeah. and that you're here right now. Yeah, good. <laughs>